talking about the business life not the busy life so hey listen i have uh, some very special guests some very dear friends of mine um and i am just super excited to introduce them to you and just get to have a conversation um about them and you know what they do for a living and things like that um so here i'm gonna play the intro to their youtube channel check this out A new home for a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride A new man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt That's right, we have We Sell that is Warren and Erica. How are y'all doing today? Hi, Donnie. Hey, Donnie. It's good to see you. We're doing great. Thanks. Man, I am so thankful that y'all get to be on this. And man, y'all are just very, very special people to Selena and I. And uh, I, I loved y'all before we got to hang out with y'all. Uh, but man, once we got to hang out with you, it's like everything that uh, I thought it would be, it was that and more. So, man, Anyway. Donnie, you're going to make me cry already. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really kind, man. man. And it's funny because right now I'm going through all the footage from mm -hmm. the trip we did together. And so I'm okay. editing our video kind of as we speak. Oh, <laughs> nice. Cool. I was hoping that uh, yeah. I was hoping that that one and a half front flip that I did turned out OK. And I was going to ask you if you could send that to me. So if you if you get it, send it over to me. I'd love to see that. I will. I was just going through the drone shots right now because we had cool drone shot and then people filming from the boat so it works out really really well very excited cool. to show it well i'm glad y'all are here so this is uh warren and, and erica cook um they are youtubers that live out on a boat right now there are where are y'all at right now actually we're in french polynesia um we're one we're in some of the smaller more remote islands called the marquesi islands okay um we're here because it's the set of islands that are kind of outside of the cyclone zone. And right now is cyclone season down here in French Polynesia. Mm. So we are just on the outside, the edge of French Polynesia, where it's the safest. And nice. uh, we're, we're in really the middle of the Pacific Ocean, honestly. Quite true. You can't even really see these islands on a map unless you really zoom in. <laughs> Man, ain't that crazy that, you know, we're, yeah. we're in a day and age right now that you can be in the middle of the ocean and you get to zoom in and, and have this type of conversation and, and interaction. It's just mind blowing, right? Uh, yeah. This, this would have been very difficult to do even a year ago, yeah. but we, we actually just got Starlink. So I, I don't know how we would have tried to do this too a year ago, but yeah, thanks to Elon and Starlink, we can uh, sit here and chat with you. Yeah. Th so thanks for having us on. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. And thanks for taking the time to do it. So, yeah, you know, um, so this podcast is really um, to inspire uh, those that are in business. You know, many business owners that I know are sort of like by themselves. So they use this podcast and things like this to sort of, you know, gleam some inspiration and and just get an uplifting, you know, uh, education to, that can help them. Um, and so, you know, whenever I was hanging out with you, I was like, man, this would be really cool to have you all on the podcast just to talk about, you know, the aspect of you know, how to tell your story through video, right? I mean, n nobody mm -hmm. better, I think, than those that, you know, do that each and every week. Um, and the, just to gleam some, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll learn some stuff from y'all and, and uh, you know, just your your education and things like that. So that's really what I wanted this, mm -hmm. this session to be, um, just to inspire yeah. those to doing that, so... Yeah, uh, yeah right something on. that I've really held on to for a while since we started this lifestyle. Um, it's called the ripple effect. And it's all about this constant ripple of inspiration because mm. where we are today wouldn't be without those who we were inspired by mm. that 
started sailing and living this lifestyle and creating a business about it. Yeah. And we're here now and we're getting to meet so many different people doing the exact same thing that those who inspired us. And then again, that ripple continues on and inspires others. Like we wouldn't have been able to meet you guys and right. learn what you and Selena do and, and yeah. your business. And it was just such an amazing thing to do and like give back to those who follow us. And mm. I mean, it's constant inspiration all around. I love it. I love it. And yeah, you're right. You know, looking back at, you know, mine and Selena's story in our life, you know, we can definitely see that ripple effect, right? This led to mm -hmm. that. And, and then these people came in our lives and things like that. So no, I, I love that. And I'll definitely hang yeah. on, hang on to that with you. So yeah. <laughs> well, well, as far as the, you know, uh, I, I, we showed the introduction to your YouTube channel. And uh, for those that are watching, you could actually find them at we sell on YouTube of course, they're on Instagram, Facebook, and all that. But to watch the videos, you can go to YouTube. Uh, just search We Sell. Um, that's our Wednesday night after we do our jujitsu training. We go home, and it's We Sell night. And so me, <laughs> Selena, and Rover, our dog, we'll sit there and, and watch it. As a matter of fact, this uh, this last Wednesday, I was, we were watching it. And I don't know what it was. It's something that, Warren, you had said something, and it caught his ear. I don't know. It's like uh, your voice or something. He's attracted to that. And, and whenever you oh. talk or whatever, he's like turned his head, you know, over to the TV. So yeah, I like that. And uh, so, so that and the whales. Yeah. That and the whales. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, as, as y'all started this journey um, five years, correct. If I remember right. Roughly? Yeah. Yep. Um, November man. will be six actually, but yeah, five, mm -hmm. a little over five. Nice. Nice. So, you know, yeah, a lot of people I'm sure are like me in the beginning is, you know, just inspired by the story and watching it and just living sort of vicariously through you on a weekly basis. Right. Um, making that switch to say, you know what, I'm going to sell my business or I'm going to leave what I've known for a long time. Right. Um, I know what it was like for me going from a full-time job to being self-employed. It was a very scary moment for me. Matter of fact, whenever I went to work one day, I told Selena, I was like, all right, today's the day I'm going to quit my job. And uh, we have the business going where we can afford to quit. And I got home and she's like, well, how'd it go? I was like, well, they gave me a raise. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah. it, it took me another three months to get the courage and i was like okay now i'm gonna really do it and i did it now but, i gotta yeah. do it yeah yeah, yeah. so uh That's just hilarious. prior to the youtube channel right what were y'all doing mm -hmm. prior well i owned a construction company and i'd owned it for um like thir i made it 14 years so yeah That's i good. had owned it for 14 years and it was pretty much all i knew as an adult mm. um so I gave it up at, uh, at 38. So yeah, I don't it a long time. And yeah. it was, it was a, it was a leap of faith and it right. was definitely scary, scary. I would say just because he, it was a very successful business. And I was at the height like, of yeah. my, uh, um, success. Honestly, I was as strong as I'd ever been. So mm. on one hand, it was really kind of crazy to walk away when I walked away. Mm -hmm. Um, the business had never been so strong, but <laughs> At the same time, it's kind of crazy to be able to do something like this and not walk away because we don't really know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know what, what the road holds for us. Yeah. So, um, there, to, to, to us, I think at the time there, there was no real question, definitely scary, but definitely yeah. we didn't really have any doubts that it was, if we could do it, we were going to do it. And, and I so think in the back of our minds too, you know, um, we, pretty much liquidated everything except yeah. the house. We still had ownership of the home that we had back in Colorado because again, something so daunting, so scary, such a massive Truly. change in our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, there's always that small little doubt. thing in the back of your yeah. mind saying, yeah, the doubt. Mm -hmm. Well, what if this doesn't work out? What if yeah. we don't like it? So Any we held on to the house um, during the time that we were gone. We actually were renting it. So that was part of our able to supplement what we were doing for the first year mm. but we said well let's just give it a year and yeah. see if both of us like it if we still want to continue uh -huh. this and go from there uh -huh. so we held on to something um but for the most part we liquidated absolutely everything in our lives yeah, yeah. and what what inspired y'all to do that Did, was there one thing that was like y'all watched or saw or just was it a conversation or something that was like let's do it you know Abs I would say absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
it's a little bit of a story, but I learned to surf in college, which was in California in Santa Cruz. Okay. And it was um, pretty terrible surfing, really, when I look back at it. The water was cold. The people were um, pretty territorial. Mm. And I remember I, once I left California and I moved back to Colorado, which is where we're both from, um, I took a surf trip to Mexico with a couple buddies who were also surfers. And it was amazing. The water was warm. Mm. The people were friendly. The waves were not crowded. <laughs> And I remember thinking, this is amazing. This is the life. And we just so happened to meet an expat, kind of a temporary expat, meaning that he spent his summers in, in, the, in the U.S. working and his winters in Mexico on a sailboat. Mm. And all he did was just take people out a couple times a week, whether it was for a little surf trip like we were on, or he would meet couples day and charter. take them out for a day charter or drinkers and wanted to have a sunset booze cruise, mm. whatever it was. And he only had to do a couple of these a week to pay his whole winter down there. And that is the moment when I said, that's what I want to do that. I want to figure out a way yeah. that I can do construction in the summer and then go to Mexico for the winter. And it, that, that never happened. I was never able to walk away from the business, but I, it did plant a seed. And I remember thinking very, very often that I was going to, find a way at some point to live on a sailboat. And I actually, Eric and I have known each other since we were much younger yeah. for a long, long time. And after college, she did a ton of traveling and I was so jealous about that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, Erica actually inspired me mm -hmm. as well. And when we started dating, the biggest thing I wanted to do was travel with her. Um, so yeah, she inspired me mm -hmm. to do this as well, but it was that surf trip that planted that seed of living on a sailboat. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Erica? Um, for me, honestly, I still had very, the travel bug. I yeah. again, like Warren still said, do. I still do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got bit real hard. <laughs> <laughs> I hear um, I actually graduated university, and I had told myself at the time, I'm going to buy a one way ticket to Europe and mm -hmm. and travel Europe and just see how that goes. Um, mm -hmm. I have French family and a French mm -hmm. background, so a big part of that for me was just to kind of get to know that side of my family and really learn the language ultimately. And so I, again, I bought a one way ticket to Europe and I kind of just said, I'm just going to give myself a year and see how this goes. And I ended up staying for three years, uh, traveling all around Europe, working in France, um, and then launching off from there to other places. And I just loved it. I really loved the travel aspect. So then when I did end up moving home and we got together, um, he had said, uh, this is actually another side story to it. Um, we had taken a trip down to Mexico. Our first trip together. Our first trip together. Christmas. And, uh, we went snorkeling and we had such a great day and we were sitting in this hammock between two palm trees. Drink the margaritas. Drink the margaritas yep. Like any good idea should start. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Warren looks out and he sees the sailboat just cruising by and he says to me, Hey, I've always wanted to live and travel on a sailboat. Would you be interested in doing that? And I just had no hesitation and said, yep. yep. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so that spring we went to the Miami boat yeah. show. Mm. And then I think the following year we chartered a, um, a catamaran in Croatia right, so. just to kind of see if see it, our feet fit. It. Yeah. We really liked it. And it did, of course, you know, it just, but from that trip in Mexico on, um, Warren started to dive into YouTube videos and see what was out there. And then mm -hmm. we started watching other sailing channels yeah. ourselves. And pricing boats. And, and what, looking on Yachting yeah, World every single pop. day and night to see what's available and how we could make this work. Yep. <laughs> okay, good. So what I'm doing is not abnormal. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a normal thing. <laughs> Uh, all right. For those that are watching or listening, hey, what we want you to walk away with is uh, a few do's and don'ts when it comes to sharing your story and your business. Um, so listen for those as we go along. The first one really that, that I came up with was really the authenticity, right, is key. Um, would you agree for with sure. that, right? Just to, just being authentic in front of the camera and in, in front of your audience. Yeah, I, I suppose it goes. It's what you're going for, mm. but I think for most good stories, if you're trying to share what it's really like, then yes, it's par paramount that you are authentic and things are organic and you're not trying to make things up. And I think 
from what I've seen, most of the channels, um, that's how they film. They just film what their lives are like, and yep. they do their best to represent mm -hmm. um, the actual truth, the whole truth, and um, show it's, what it's really like. It's definitely hard, I'd say. Like, I think our authenticity shines just genuine personality. It comes out yeah. naturally. Yeah. Um, but I, to I film the, the moments that are difficult, um, mm -hmm. the challenges that we face, whether it's the weather, the boat, each other Accidents. in our marriage, um, struggles struggles mm -hmm. it's really hard to pick up a camera in that situation and scenario <laughs> and document it and share <laughs> what, that what did you so, call me here say it, it again <laughs> right yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly um, <laughs> but overall i think trying to just like one said the truth and this is what, yeah. how we live this is who we are yeah. it really shines because then you know what i found really interesting is we did our very first patreon charter mm -hmm. and that's how what donnie and selena came on this trip with us yep. um initially it's very odd and funny because you guys watch us weekly you know us yeah. like you've really gotten to know who we I, are I know. and then we get to meet you and it's like they know who we are yeah <laughs> and then that quickly goes away because i don't we don't have to pretend to be anything else we are right. we're like friends already yeah so. <laughs> yeah yeah whenever so uh prior to the trip i was i was really the one that would watch all the time you know selena really she had her other uh, things that she would watch so she didn't really want to invest into something else i guess you would say and uh, she's like no no you you know because there's several times she watched a few of the episodes but just on a religious weekly basis you know she didn't uh watch those with me so i'd, I'd watch that and uh so whenever i sort of talked her into going you know i was like trust me you'll love them they're amazing people i I love them. She's I know like, them. And she was like, how do you know? I'm like, trust me. They're very authentic. You're right? trust me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so anyway, and she said, you're right. They're awesome. It's like, of course, they're awesome. Awesome. Yeah. 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 We uh, loved you guys. We had such a good time. We did. We did. And uh, yeah. so um, real quick, let's go back to more of your story. So what uh, what can you share? Can you share like a favorite uh, selling adventure or one? Mo I know you have a ton of moments that you love um throughout the last five or so years you know but is there one that just really sticks out you're like this was pretty fun or cool or whatever i i think so do you um do you want to go first sure okay I, i'll never forget the, this moment and there are you're right so these many. moments seem to happen almost daily where you're like oh yeah this is why i'm doing this <laughs> all of the struggle this is what makes it worth it yep but for me, I think the most amazing thing and the most memorable moment um, was actually at night. We were, we were, we had crossed the Panama Canal. This is in the first two years of us sailing. We'd crossed the Panama Canal from the Caribbean into the Pacific side of Central America. So we were actually leaving Costa Rica and we were going up to Mexico. And this was about an 18 day passage that we had out at sea. Mm -hmm. And we experienced about four or five days of the most amazing calm. I've never seen the ocean look more like a lake that has not even a ripple on it. It had no movement. It was just amazing. But we ended up motoring at night, um, which we don't do a lot. We don't do a lot of motoring, but were we motoring or sailing? I think it was a mix. It was a okay. combination because we were dealing with some pretty low wind. Yeah. We just so we were we were motoring, I believe, or motor sailing, maybe yeah. even. But if you guys know what bioluminescence are, mm -hmm. it's kind of a phenomenon where there's microorganisms in the water that can glow, but they only glow when they're stirred they're up. Agitated. When they're agitated, exactly. Okay. So you, if you splash the water or you run your hand through it, it is a light show. It's like mm. sparkles all yeah, over the water. Exactly. Dark. And what had happened was we got a dolphin visit in the middle of the night. There wasn't any sort of moon, no light, except for the dolphins moving through the water. They looked like a lit up little torpedo. And you could see every, the outline of the, the entire form. dolphin, every fin, every, it was the most amazing thing. And they stayed with us for like an hour. And we both sat on the bow of the boat with the autopilot on so that we didn't have to do anything with the boat. Yeah. And we sat there hardly saying a word just mm -hmm. almost with a tear in our eye 
It didn't watching seem this. real. It didn't no. look real. Um, it looked like something out yeah. of Life of Pi, where it was kind of like CGI'd right. and it like was just these dolphins swimming through the galaxy. Yeah, yes, the exactly. best way I could describe it. It was just so incredible. Wild. There was no way we could get this on film. The light is too low, but it was yeah. just. I guess it was kind of a moment for us, and that's par- mm. partially why I think it was so special, and I will never forget it. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember the those few episodes that, that you're talking of because. Uh, it was like glass and you had like some turtles coming up and, and that's all this, it. Yeah, all that's, this that's life. The days, Donnie. Yeah. I remember that. I remember watching that. Yeah. 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 Yep. We yeah. weren't looking forward to that. We knew that calm period was forecast yep. in our wind forecast and we weren't looking forward to it. And out of the 18 days that we were at sea, those four days that we were becalmed yep. were, were our favorite days. We didn't, we hardly yeah. any miles. We didn't hardly make any movement, mm. but we had a good friend Trevor with us and we would jump in the water all day and just play. And we had dolphins around us. We had a turtle that hung out with it's us just, for like three hours. It's just didn't it feel real oh, to me. Yeah. I think Unfair. that whole thing, and I'm going to piggyback on that because mm. it is actually one of my favorite moments as well that stands out because yeah. We were out in the middle of the ocean for miles. There's no land. There's nobody else. And it's just us on the water. Mm-hmm. And again, the water, the conditions, it's hard to imagine the ocean being something that's constantly moving and has, it had mm-hmm. nothing. It, it was that. just a mirror. Yeah. yeah. So it was really special. And just being out there uh, for me, I guess my, aside from just, being surrounded by the nature and the wildlife and out there and surrounded by nobody. For me, it was more or less, um, this was also during COVID. Um, Mm -hmm. and we were needing to get somewhere because the hurricane season was approaching as well. And we had stopped off in a village in Mexico at one point during the whole lockdown. And it was just the strangest, most bizarre feeling. Yeah. Um, to be on land, to see everything blocked up. There was boarded windows. There was nobody in town. It was a weird time. And this, <laughs> it was a very weird time. time. Yeah. And this was just after us sailing for about 18 days wow. from Costa Rica to get to Mexico. Mm. It took us 18 days because there was no wind. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as we got to shore and to land and that whole scenario was going down, I immediately looked at Warren and I said, I want to get it back out there. Yeah. I just feel so much better out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's weird too, it's like, you know, being on land, you know, during that time. And I'm sure, you know, some of your family explained this as well too. It's like, that was a little bit of a slow process, even though it felt fast, but it was still, you know, some slowness to it. Uh, but whenever you're away out on the water and then you come back, it's like, what the heck happened? Are we in the twilight zone or, you know, I could imagine. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was crazy. That's yeah. exactly how we felt when yeah. we got it because we really didn't hear too much about it. We knew that something was happening before we took off on that 18 day passage. Mm-hmm. And we kind of half believed that when we got to Mexico, we had zero communication. This was far before Starlink and mm-hmm. we had zero communication. Um, we half believed that when we got, to Mexico, it would have blown over. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. what we really thought was going to happen. And we could have our margaritas. And- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, so we, that's what we were talking about. Can't wait for tacos. Can't wait for margaritas. And we yeah. got there, and there was like tumbleweeds going down the street. And the, everything was boarded up. Nobody was out. Yeah. And nothing was open. It was. We were like, oh god, no! It got it's way worse than we thought. Yeah. I think it, it just that solidified it for me that. I really like being on the water. I yeah. really like having yeah. our floating home. Oh yeah, and we could continue to do this. That, yeah. that was the moment for me that okay, mm-hmm. even even in the calmest of moments and the chaos in the world, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, what are uh, what would be like three essential tips that you'd give someone, um, and whenever they're really trying to start videoing or using video um to tell their story right um you know we talked about like authenticity is key um one thing that i i wrote is uh you know tell a compelling story right making sure that you um put some thought into the story do y'all do y'all um whenever you create in your channel is it more like hey i'm just gonna film and then whatever comes out comes out or you know, do y'all have like a a theme or something that ends up fleshing out during that week? Or am I making sense? Um, That's a really yeah, good question. A good question. I think it started off 
just film and see what we capture and what we get. Yeah, I think that's mostly what we do, yeah. even to this date. Sure. It, there, there are times when we have an idea for a video and, we, and something, maybe something needs to be said or covered, mm-hmm. shared. You know, we'll do a specific video on the boat that we're on or, you know, the money that we spend is a really big topic. People love knowing that. So that, that's something we, you know, have made a specific video about. But yep. generally, we just film our lives um, and normally... There's enough excitement going on. You um, never know what to expect out there. That's the thing. Yeah, that, I think this probably wouldn't work the same if we were just living uh, some some other type of life. It's it's because sailing is so can be so challenging, and there's so many variables and so many things that are in play, and that we have to take into consideration um, that help us tell this story or help make this story. Um, and then on top of it, most of the places that in the world i think are beautiful and unique and have and help create a story or have a story of their own mm-hmm. certainly french polynesia you know the history here the people um and the landscape is is incredible so that yeah. certainly doesn't hurt us yeah. uh but yeah i think too if you've seen our channel from the beginning to where we are now um it has evolved uh-huh. a lot i think and uh yeah. we've grown a lot in terms of just our confidence on the water, on the boat, uh, the camera. with the camera, and yeah. just sharing what we want to share. The very beginning, um, again, we, just a little backstory, we didn't know how to sail to start. Not at so, all. <laughs> that was a Crazy. big challenge. We were trying to figure that all out. <laughs> and we didn't know how to video or edit or do any of that. So there was so many new things that we were learning all at the same time. We were also freshly married too, so that was. We were learning how to be thing. married. Yeah. 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 So that, that, um, it, y'all, y'all are. I'm telling you, we're cut from the same cloth too, because like when it comes to business, right? Someone asks because we have our charcuterie business, right? And so whenever yeah. we open it up, everybody's like, "Okay, so you were doing martial arts for a long time, and now you're doing charcuterie, right? What do you know about charcuterie?" <laughs> Like, I don't know. Well, you know yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out, know. right? You know, and yeah. so there's just, an opening. So yeah, <laughs> there's no. Yeah, so and I, I, think I just love that. The biggest challenge is doing a business with your partner and living together twenty four seven. It has it's there's it's, there's some stresses. So mm-hmm. yeah, we we've learned a lot along the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. You know, and but I and I think to answer your question though, Donnie, like um, we've just gotten better with what we want to document mm. and come up with certain ideas and we get feedback from our viewers too like hey i want to know about this or Mm. what's it like to do this so that helps us kind of segue to sharing that in another video Mm. um we don't really storyboard our our videos we can we can plan to a point yeah but again there's we just can't expect it to go the Uh, way we hope (laughs) if if i was going to pinpoint three things authenticity for sure Nobody really, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think anybody really wants to see, you know, somebody's story if it's made up or it's not genuine. Mm -hmm. Um, I think channels do well when they have high energy and there's something exciting happening in it. And Mm -hmm. and it could be positive, negative, whatever. A challenge can be exciting too, you know, a challenge, you know, there's, uh, you know, channels out there where they're just building a home, but the challenges of building a home is the excitement. So, or the location, doing it in a a a very remote place. Yeah. Or a very remote place, you know, so the challenge helps if you have something that's challenging, you know, that can add a lot of excitement, but Mm -hmm. the level of excitement is going to be a big positive for your channel. Right. And then thirdly, this one's huge, probably should have been number one, is patience because mm-hmm. there are those channels out there that can grow really quickly. Um, but generally, I think it's more of a marathon than it is a sprint. And for us, we know this for sure. Um, we experienced extremely sl- slow growth for the first year or two. And uh, it was really challenging to keep it going when we weren't really seeing much growth and zero, zero money, which now we definitely make a little bit of money off of our mm-hmm. channel. Sure. enough to keep it going and make it worth it but in the beginning we didn't and so um i think those would be the three top things is uh, yeah keep all that money the money is obviously motivating because that's what continued us to keep going and start you know editing more yeah. or filming more but yeah. uh second to that truly for me it was the the followers the people that started following our adventures and our travels like we've almost created this relationship we've captivated everyone and they want to just know what's going to happen next, right. you know? 
<laughs> there's this relationship that's built. Yeah. Yep. yep. And so next question, you know, goes right into, you know, audience type engagement, right? So um, how do you keep your audience engaged, excited about the uh, selling adventures? But I mean, you sort of already answered that um, more so like your interaction with them, right? So, um, you know, how do y'all typically, you know, communicate with the audience? You said that you, uh, you know, get feedback from them. What's that from just YouTube comments or? Yeah, just mostly YouTube comments. Um, it's gotten to the point, though, for us that we, we read through it pretty much every single comment, but it's been very hard because it's just Warren and I managing yeah. the we sale. Yep. Um, so to respond to all that and do everything that we're doing on top of it is becoming harder and harder. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so we try to respond to as many people as we possibly can, but there's another platform that we've utilized as content creators called Patreon. Yep. And it supports any sort of artists across the board, whether it's video, painting, construction, um, people who want to support or help that and engage in that. Patreon is a platform that we utilize the most. And we try to make the communications um, more on our Patreons, with our Patreons. I think we're able to answer just about every question yeah. that comes across on on Patreon. I mean, they're, they're the ones like you guys helping support this, yeah. um, this channel and keep it alive. So we make mm -hmm. a, a, an effort for yeah. sure to, to communicate on there with them. And we're an open book. Um, yeah. we don't want to steer shy of, you know, not sharing our experiences. No. Um, it was one thing that when we started watching YouTube sailing channels, we had so many, we had, reached, we had so many questions. We had reached out to a couple of channels and all I wanted was just a quick response back to answer yeah. something simple. And so I just want to make sure that I continue that. It was something yeah. that I wanted early on. Mm. So I want to make sure I answer that back. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I love it. Yep. Paying it forward. So those that are watching, we shameless plug, we actually have a Patreon that I just set up, right? Uh, so yeah, if you're nice. interested in uh, supporting the podcast and if you're enjoying mm -hmm. this, number one, we appreciate you. Uh, share, like, comment, um, you know, on our YouTube channel. Um, but you can also uh, check out our Patreon channel as well, too, and uh, get some exclusive content. So, yeah. Uh, yep. Perfect. Uh, yes. So, um, you know, really, when I, now let's gear towards speaking to the small business owner. You know, um, okay. Warren, you were a small business owner at one time, right? Picture back whenever you were doing that, growing your business. Um, and I know you construction, even though you probably could, could have easily had made a YouTube channel over your construction business in you probably would have got hundreds of thousands of followers on that. Cause I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I would, I would enjoy watching how to, I, lo I love watching how to build stuff and things like that. So um, now knowing what you know, now going back and saying, okay, uh, beginner business owner, right. You're, you're going to use video for telling your story. Um, would there be any advice that you would give to that beginning business owner that, does plan on using video for their business? Um, well, you're number one, you're absolutely right. Looking back on it, knowing what I know now, can you say I'm, that again? I have, can you say that again? Cause Selena is probably watching and go, go, <laughs> uh, Warren, go ahead and say that one more time for the audience in the back. You're, you are absolutely right. You nailed it on that one. There we, I think it's happened twice on the show so far. You really <laughs> nailed it. Over, I'm like flashback. I'm like, didn't we just have that happen on our charter with you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, uh, thirty years. I got to get missed him in an like opportunity. Him. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Good. Um, I really wish I would have known more about the capabilities on YouTube because I was doing some pretty unique stuff building. And if I would have been able to film that and put that on, I think it would have not only helped other people looking to do that but I, it was some really unique projects that we were doing and it mm -hmm. would have been neat to see but i just didn't know that it was yeah, even sure. a, even a thing yeah. um, at that time and i guess my advice because i think there is a lot of opportunity if you are if you have anything that's exciting or unique or it tells a great specific story skill. or specific skill mm -hmm. that would help others figure something out you, you should be doing it on youtube you should be sharing that on youtube yeah. it takes it takes there's an adjustment period and a learning curve to editing mm -hmm. to filming it and it certainly um 
takes time. You know, the, the projects that I was doing, it would have, I would have had to carve out a little extra time, maybe in the morning to set up cameras, mm -hmm. take the time to do some of the filming. Um, and even during the day, you know, to actually say, Hey, this is the challenge that we're facing today and talk about it a little bit and have my guys slow down a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be, no matter what it is, it's not going to be without its challenges, but, um, certainly we can see by the growth of youtube over the last year five years ten years that um there's such a market for it everybody uh, has been a, you know starting to gravitate towards youtube for for learning teaching um entertainment you know it's taking fixing, like, fixing outboard motors right definitely <laughs> yeah. you know help <laughs> yeah. we we use it ourselves all the time yeah. Yeah. um and so we can see that it's now a tool and it's also taking a slice away from cable TVs and, and the Netflixes, you know, so um, my advice would be to what one thing that really helped us a lot was the editing. Uh, we took a course and mm -hmm. there's a lot of places that can teach this if you if you want to actually get hands on rather than doing it on YouTube, which also has plenty of um, videos on this, but learning a good program like Premiere Pro is what we use, but there's also um, DaVinci Resolve and a couple other programs that are pretty big and, and would, you know, help because you're going to have to edit it, put yeah. it together and clean it up. I would just say take some time to, to learn that aspect, the, the editing mm -hmm. side, the filmmaking side, and then use your story and your skill set. Come up with a story. Yep, exactly. What's your message? What, do you, what What is the point? Are you trying to is it informative are you trying to teach people how to do something mm -hmm. are you trying to be pure entertainment right um it can be a mix of both but yeah deciding what that's going to be and yeah and I, it may even evolve over time but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i definitely see uh really for any any uh you know small business owner i think uh there's a lot of opportunity there for video and sharing your story and things like that uh, so I did want to get into, you know, a few of the don'ts, right? What not to do. Uh, we talk about, you know, yeah. what you should do in this and, and, uh, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll share a few and, you know, if y'all, y'all chime up on y'all's as well too. So, uh, one thing that I, I'm, I've learned in business and, um, you know, sharing content and things like that is really number one, mine is don't oversell. Right. Don't oversell, mm. especially like when it comes to social media posting and things like that. I see a lot of business owners. All they're doing is, you know, hey, uh, here's a special. Here's a special. Here's a special. And there's no real there's no real content or no nothing you're giving me in order for me to buy from you and things like that. So that, that's yeah. one of my top don'ts when it comes to any yeah. kind of videoing or any social media posting and things like that for business owners. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's just, it totally goes back to the authenticity and just being real in that um, there on social media is us and what we're doing. And then, so when we get to those points of promoting something, um, whether it's a video or a trip coming up or a special event, we have our followers that are just so committed already with us that it's they're like yeah no problem we know who they are we know what they want or what they do is just completely genuine um yeah. i mean it's it's hard because another thing that i i see on like social media um is everything is just all like the positives and mm -hmm. showing like how real it can be on yeah. the other side of things um it just makes the connection better i think mm -hmm. with you're with um buyers i guess you could say buyers is really yeah, yeah. what it is yeah, sure yeah people who are following buying into what yeah. you're selling yeah. yeah i would say don't um don't hide the struggle don't hide any of the negative stuff you know people are going to want in my opinion people are going to want to see the whole story mm -hmm. uh the positives and the negatives mm -hmm. uh don't expect quick growth don't don't expect to you know just blow up uh, and don't give up um, yeah it's going to take a while you're going to gain some momentum. You're going to learn more. Um, you're going to focus what you're doing and, and your target audience. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, don't give up. And uh, I mean, we're all people in the end, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just, yeah, for sure. Um, another one that I, I thought of was, uh, you know, don't neglect quality, right? 
So oh, it's a good one. Don't neglect quality. Yeah. I think quality goes. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. neglect quality just to spit something out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I find that's hard for me because I, as we continue to make our videos every week, um, I want it. I want to improve. I want to make them better. Mm-hmm. And then I become a perfectionist mm-hmm. and I just want to make it, make this video better than the last one. Right. And I have to remind myself like, yeah, we'll get better. But at the same time, like, being consistent i think yeah. is mm. huge for us yeah. um again like warren was saying i would say the first year and a half most probably two years we didn't make any money on making yeah, these videos posted and we posted every single week yeah and that was our goal is we just have to be consistent yeah yep. no i think i think That's- a consistent message right and because i think what happens with consistency quality um not overselling they really find out who you are and you know because the whole uh saying that i have is people buy from who they like right and even though you have yep. a youtube channel right you're still selling you're the you're really the product that you're selling right yourselves yep. your story um yep. so you're you're definitely you know a business owner uh, per se um and so that translates to really anything any product uh service that mm-hmm. we're selling right we just need to be consistent um and uh, authentic not overselling, let them know you behind the camera per se. Right. Cause, mm-hmm. um, like in the charcuterie business, um, you know, so many of our owners want to take pictures of the food, which is great. Cause you're, you're selling that. Right. And you need to yes. uh, put that out there. But you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of people could make this stuff themselves. I mean, it may not be as pretty, but they could do it themselves. Right. Um, so to sell you and your story and why you're so passionate about this, then, they're like, wow, well, I, I want I want the product that you put out because of you, not necessarily all because of the product. So, um, right. for, yeah, for the small business owner that has a product or a service that you're selling, my recommendation is to turn the camera around every once in a while, right? Let them yeah. see. Uh, and I love what you said about, you know, let them see the struggle. Um, yes. you know, small business is very difficult to start in the beginning. And I mean, there was a moment last year that, you know, I definitely doubted some of my life choices. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, we're, ble- <laughs> we're bleeding quick. Right. And, uh, yeah. you know, and I, I'd put a post out, right. And I said, Hey, look, you know, I put a post of us cutting, cutting the, the ribbon, um, whenever we do our ribbon cutting it in, you know, at the front, I posted that and I said, you know, business from the outside looks like it's very glamorous. But here's, yeah. here's, mm-hmm. here's what it really is, right? And I listed some mm-hmm. stuff there. And, uh, yeah, I had that that post right there was probably the, the highest rated post on all my posts that I've ever put yeah. out, right? But it was just authentic. Being so right? real. Being real yeah. and authentic. is like, look, small business is tough, right? And, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just turning the camera around every once in a while, sharing your story, yeah. I think, is huge. Um, I think, too, for me is uh, that – there's so many products out there. There's so many things available now to buy or to get or whatever it may be or to watch. Mm -hmm. And it trying to filter through which one Mm -hmm. is the best one. You know, you read reviews and all that kind of stuff. Essentially people want to buy things from people who, who they feel like they know and that they genuinely can review something like, Oh, they're using that. And I trust that they, they know what they're doing or I trust that they actually mean what they say right. when they're talking about this product or something like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. You filter through all that. It's a lot. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. All right. So tell us uh, a funny or unexpected um, experience <laughs> while you're filming your channel. Oh, God. How dirty can we get? Because <laughs> the funniest thing is also quite dirty. Maybe we'll go medium dirty. Yeah, there you go. I'm what, quite what, nervous. I don't what, know what he's talking we're about. We're adults here, but you can go ahead. Okay, well, I will I will PG thirteen this there story. Let's um, do that. We got we 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 ended up in an anchorage just outside of La Paz, Mexico. The anchorage is a really cute little beautiful beach cove, yeah right beautiful beach probably 10 miles out of la paz and so um it's also only has room for about five boats and we were about the fourth or fifth boat to get in there anyways and and we were anchored quite close to a few other boats one of them was this little monohull 
Mm. And uh, <laughs> we come in filming because it's just a beautiful beach, anyways. Yeah. We're talking about how we just spent a couple weeks up in some remoter places, and we were happy to finally get yeah. into like the town, or yeah. And we pull in. <laughs> well, so the very first morning that we were there, we got there late at night. The next morning, um, I look onto the beach, and there's a half a dozen people on the beach, and one of them was a topless woman in a teeny thong, which if you guys don't know Mexico, They're Mexico is a little bit on the conservative yeah. side. And my, our whole two years in Mexico, I had never seen a topless woman. So I was like, wow, this is <laughs> new and interesting. And, and so I'll admit, I grabbed at the binoculars. I was like, I got to get a closer look. And in the binoculars, I realized that is not a woman. That is a man with a perfectly tan little tush um, <laughs> in a teeny thong, right? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I got... Uh, Ihorn! I had... Ihorn was a man! Finkel is Ihorn! Ihorn is Finkel! Oh my gosh, we should put that in there. That's you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's a, uh, it's a, it's an accident anybody could make, okay? Oh, yeah. You know, it was a long way away, my <laughs> eyesight's not the same as it w once was, and uh you know, this body was perfectly, you know, it looked like a perfectly tan woman with a nice little tush and turned out to be a man. And so I, I fully admitted it to Erica. And now, you know, all of your viewers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my uh, gosh. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, Erica? Um, I don't know. I mean, the guy, man? yeah, the, the thing about the sailing lifestyle is there's people from all walks of earth living out on the boat you know yeah. it could be anything from doctors to ex-lawyers to scientists Convicts, maybe to who knows? you never know All you right. never know who you're gonna you know run into or, or see out here and living on a sailboat um there is this freedom that comes with it you know being in remote places there's no one around and you pull into anchorages every now and then and you know it's it's on, sometimes i kind of say it's like a glorified trailer park <laughs> be, yeah. on the water yeah. um because everyone has their little floating home so to speak and yeah. you know you're checking out the neighbors here and there and you're living this ultimate free life and yeah. that means that people will be new yeah. and that people will do nude yoga from time to time and it's just like <laughs> Okay. On the bow of their boat. On the that bow get, of that gives boat. a new like, image of downward dog. It's fine dog. if you okay. have the anchorage all to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but some moves yeah. should not be done yeah. by a naked man on the bow of his boat. And I'm just going to say that. I and agree. then the best part is, you know, you go to the beach later for sundowners and drinks, and you end up running into these people. And <laughs> You're like, I've seen your <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, hey, if you're still watching, then uh, we saved the best for last, right? So it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but but now, seriously, if you would like, subscribe, and help us grow this channel, uh, highly appreciated. And then please, please, please check out We Sell. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's amazing and uh, it's fun to watch. They're uh, they're amazing people. Um, I don't hang out with anybody less. So. Thank you all very much for being on the show. Um, stay on here because I want to talk to you after. But again, thank yeah. you all so much. We love you and appreciate you. And Selena says, share them. my love. Uh, oh, yes. And uh, she misses y'all too. Send it right back. And yeah, thank you absolutely. so much, Donnie, Thanks for, for inviting us. us. Fun. Yeah. And if you guys do watch our channel in the next week or two, uh, you're going to get to you're see Donnie, Donnie doing ah. a bunch of backflips and diving and yeah. having fun on the trip we were just on in Bora Bora. So nice. it's going to be a good episode. Cool. Yeah, man. All right. Thanks. We'll see y'all next time on the Biz Life Podcast. Cheers. Hello? Okay. That's